Hello everyone. So in this pre-lecture tutorial, I'm going to give you an example and also a breakdown of how it is that we write a rate law for a chemical reaction. So based on your reading uh, that corresponds to this particular pre-lecture tutorial, you should have gathered that when I have a chemical reaction, such as this chemical reaction that I've given as an example on this slide, I can write an expression for the rate of that reaction that depends on the concentration of reactants for that chemical reaction. So, for example, for this reaction, our rate law should look something like the rate is equal to some constant k, which is the rate constant, multiplied by the molar concentration of the hydrogen peroxide, since that's the first reactant in the reaction equation, raised to some power m times the concentration of the iodide raised to some power n and the concentration of the hydrogen ion raised to some power p. Now the thing to keep in mind is for an overall rate law for a chemical reaction we cannot assume that these exponents correspond to the stoichiometric coefficients in the chemical reaction equation. Sometimes it works out that way, but oftentimes it doesn't. The only way that you can actually determine these exponents, which are what we refer to as the reaction orders, the only way that we can find the reaction orders is by experimentation. And typically, when you run these experiments, what you do is you select different concentrations of each of the reactants and you run the chemical reaction and measure the initial rate of reaction for each independent trial. And normally the way that you select the concentrations is normally you try to hold all but one of the reactant concentrations constant from one trial to the next. So for example, notice here between trial one and two, basically the peroxide concentration does vary but the iodide stays the same and the hydrogen stays the same. And there's a reason for that. When I actually illustrate how we actually find the orders of reaction and write the final rate law, you'll see why it's done that way. But basically that's typical. And normally you would see a change in the rate and you use that change in the rate compared to the change in concentration to figure out the reaction order with respect to each reactant. And then you're able to write the overall rate law and determine the overall reaction order. So let's actually go through how you would actually find each of these reaction orders in detail, and hopefully that'll be of help to you. What you're going to do, all right, is you're going to use the data from this table. And let's say, for example, that I'm being asked to find the order of each reactant, the overall reaction order, and then I'm supposed to write the reaction rate law. You're going to take a stepwise approach. I'm going to focus initially on finding the reaction order for the hydrogen peroxide first. So what I want to do is I want to pick two trials where only the peroxide concentration is varying and all of the other reactants are held constant. And so if I look carefully at the data table, I see that the data for trial 1 and trial 2 is exactly what I'm looking for. Notice that the concentration of the peroxide is changing, but the iodide stays the same and the hydrogen stays the same. What I'm going to do is divide one trial against another. Now, normally, when I set up those ratios, I try and pick it so that the higher concentration of the reactant I'm studying and the rate that comes from that particular concentration that is actually in the numerator. And then I would take the other trial and put it in the denominator. So I'm going to take the data for experiment two, and I'm going to divide it out by the data for the rate for experiment one. And I'm going to write out this general rate law, substituting in the numbers that I have in my data table. So as we can see, for rate 2, that's this rate constant that I don't know yet. And 
I'm going to insert my peroxide concentration, and that's 0 0.020 for trial 2, raised to some power m that I don't know, times 0 0.010, raised to the n power times 0 0.00050, which corresponds to the hydrogen ion concentration, raised to some power p. Okay, now I'm going to divide out by, again, notice this rate constant should still be a part of the rate law that corresponds to the data in experiment 1, but now I'm going to enter in the experimental data that goes with experiment 1 into that same generic rate law. So it's the concentration of peroxide, so for trial 1, that's 0 0.010, again raised to the m. And for the iodide, it's 0 0.010 raised to the n. And then for the hydrogen ion, it's 0 0.00050 raised to the p. Now, I'm going to set this equal to the ratio of rates for the corresponding trial. So for trial 2, the rate was 2.30 times 10 to the negative 6. I'm going to divide that out by 1.15 times 10 to the negative 6. And so what you should notice right away is since we're talking about the same chemical reaction, this rate constant should be the same regardless which trial I'm talking about. So since each of these k's is the same, if I divide one set of experimental data by another, then this constant k will cancel out anyway. Notice also that for the iodide ion, that I have 0.01 to the n divided by 0.01 to the n. Anything divided by itself is 1, so that cancels out. The same can be said for the hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, basically it's the same number over itself, 0 0.00050 raised to the p over itself, and so basically that means that that cancels out as well. What that leaves me with is 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.01, which is 2, raised to the mth power. And if I divide out these rates, then 2.30 times 10 to negative 6 divided by 1.15 times 10 to negative 6, that ends up being 2. So 2 to the m equals 2. The only exponent that's going to give me this result is if the exponent is 1. So what that means is that the reaction order for hydrogen peroxide in this reaction is 1. Okay, I'm going to repeat that now for the iodide. I'm going to find the reaction order for the iodide. So once again, I'm going to try and select data where only the iodide ion concentration is changing. So if I take a look at that, that's going to be trial 3 and trial 1. If you notice, the peroxide and the hydrogen ion concentration remains the same, but the iodide is changing. So if I go ahead and assemble the exact same ratio, except this time it's going to be rate 3 over rate 1, okay, this time I'm going to go and I'm going to get K times 0 0.010. Now, again, we just found out that the reaction order with respect to the hydrogen peroxide is 1, so if I wanted to, I could actually go ahead and plug in that exponent since I know it, since I found the value of m earlier. And that's going to be multiplied by 0 0.020 to the n, I haven't found n yet, and 0 0.00050 to the p. All right, and I'm going to divide that out by k times 0 0.010, again, to the first, over 0 0.010 to the n, times 0 0.00050, to the p. All right? And again, if I take a look at the rates that correspond with both of those trials, I get the same ratio as I did up 
here where I was finding the reaction order for the hydrogen peroxide. So that's 2.30 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 1.15 times 10 to the minus 6. So if I cancel out again, basically the peroxide concentration will cancel as will the rate constant. The concentration of the hydrogen ion will also cancel and what I get is 2 to the nth is equal to, and again this ratio we know from earlier, is 2. So again, the only exponent that gives me this result is 1. So that means that basically this reaction is also first order with respect to the iodide concentration. Now all I have to do is do it one more time for the hydrogen ion. So once again, I'm going to try and pick out two trials where only the hydrogen ion concentration is changing. Now, if I look carefully, that should be, uh, I'm sorry, the rate data for trial 4, as well as the rate data for trial 1. Notice that again, in this case, only the hydrogen ion concentration is changing. And so if I go ahead and assemble the same ratio, this would be rate 4 over rate 1, if I plug in, that's k times 0 0.010 to the first, since I found the value of m earlier, times 0 0.010 to the first as well, since I found the value of n in the preceding part, times 0 0.00050 raised to the p. I'm going to divide that out by k once again over 0 0.010 to the first, divided by 0 0.010 also to the first, and then this time, actually, you know what, let me make a quick correction here. For rate 4, actually, the concentration of the hydrogen ion is 0 0.00100 in that numerator. But it's 0 0.00050 for the data from experiment 1. That's also going to be raised to the P. And if I take a look now the rates don't change basically this is 1.15 times 10 to the minus 6 is the rate that came from trial 4 and 1.15 times 10 to the minus 6 which is the rate that came from trial 1 so the k's would cancel as would the concentration of the peroxide and the concentration of the iodide dividing through for the concentration of the hydrogen ion that would be 2 raised to the p power. But if you take a look at this, that means that this ratio should equal 1. So the only exponent that I can raise something to and get an answer of 1 is 0. So that means that this reaction is 0 with order with respect to H plus. So that turns out to be significant because what that means is that the reaction does not depend on the concentration of H+. Plus. So to answer the questions that I was given in this problem, I just determined the order for each reaction were first order with respect to the peroxide, first order with respect to the iodide, and zero with order with respect to the hydrogen ion. The overall order is just the sum over all of the individual orders for each reactant. So for the exponents that I chose, that would be m plus n plus p. So that would be 1 plus 1 plus 0. That means this reaction has an overall order of 2, or we would consider it an overall second order reaction. If I'm going to write the rate law, then the rate would be equal to the rate constant times the concentration of the peroxide raised to the first power, but I'm not going to show that first power, it's one understood, times the iodide ion concentration. And since the reaction order for the hydrogen ion is zero, then I wouldn't even include it in the rate law, and this would actually be 
the final rate law for this reaction. So hopefully this example helped. Work on the follow-up assignment so that you can have a better idea if you actually understood this concept, and we'll discuss it further in class. Again, if there are any questions, feel free to email. All right, have a good night.